All right, we're back with Lily Richards from Unity Books. We have, I don't know what that weird thing was. Um, Adam Hazlitt, Union Atlantic, uh, has said it's all about the, uh, the housing crisis. 2000? Yeah, 2000. I have one gripe about it, which I'm going to air. I normally don't okay. complain about a book, but um, I read a really good review of this in, uh, was it Guardian? So it was, it was really well received, yeah. and it is a very good read. Some great drug-taking scenes in there, particularly good one where they all <laughs> have mushrooms and go downstairs and have to eat dinner with one of the kids' parents. Oh, God. <laughs> and, they, and she's like, the mother's really wealthy. She's part of the firm. And she's decided to, she's like pumped up on Valium and, and alcohol. And she's um, decided to cook this really strange like African dish. <laughs> and so it just doesn't really look like anything. It looks like a disaster and they're all on mushrooms sitting there just like, <laughs> great Not scene. knowing what's going on. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those scenes in, in writing where it makes you feel like you're sort of somehow annihilated yourself. Um, but my criticism of it was that, yes, this happened. And yes, this is currently happening. Apparently he wrote this long before that actually happened in terms of the crisis, so it was okay. quite prescient. But I'm a little bit tired of people telling us what's going on, rather than people saying, this is what's happened, but it could have gone in, in a different direction, like yep. this is what we could do now, we could kind of come up with a different economic model, that one that values something more valuable ostensibly than, than just money, you know, yep. some kind of actual human worth as currency. And I, I think that that would be a way more interesting book than going, really rich people screwed us over. Now you mean offering, a, offering it solutions rather than just... Yeah, yeah exactly, because yeah. that's where yeah. fiction is free, to kind yeah. of walk in every direction. You don't have to worry about Obama, you don't have to worry about the incumbents, you don't have to worry about the people on Wall Street. You can just go and do that, you mm -hmm. know, and come up with some really interesting solutions. And so, I'm, yeah, as much as it's a good book, it's a starting point for something that I would like to read more than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, Union Atlantic, Adam Hazlitt. What you just what we were just been hearing about um, uh, sort of oh, what, what do we do what do you do oh there, there we go there we go she's freaking out okay, I'm freaking out I'm freaking out <laughs> all right? read my mind Ross. I don't know I just, you just do this and I'm like what on earth is happening um, uh, yes good I I would be interested in actually having listen uh, listen to this read of this and yeah I'd also recommend that podcast as well right we'll do um, brush up on mortgage and subprime absolutely so. it's it's a great yeah. thing to brush up on um, now. Uh, we both went to a, a David Sedaris the other night. Yes. Did you enjoy it? I did. Yes. I very much enjoyed it. Good. I was glad that he read some stuff that I hadn't come across before because I was worried that it might be a bit repetitive. But David Sedaris is a writer, by the way. Memoirist very. and columnist yep. and writer for The New Yorker. Uh, a humorist as well. Yeah. So, and you're a comedian. Did you not find it that great? I don't know. I, I, I think it was just confusing to me. Not confusing to me, but... But it, it, I was a bit in the middle because I, I knew it wasn't it, w it wasn't material I, I I'd consider funny enough for stand up. Right. But it's it's such a different medium of you know re reading out that it's, there's di completely different rules. So I was just a bit in the middle. I, I enjoyed his stories, but his his humour I think I think it's just I find I like his sister Amy a lot. She's she's got the a very different take on humour. And she's obviously more of a performer and uh, yeah. stuff. But yeah, it was really interesting. I don't know. I think that's why I like it so much because of the way that he walks the middle line between yeah. between a story and this sort of incidental humour in it. And you have to be quite patient to get to the point yeah. rather than just having it hit you over and over again. Mm. And also, I think he's amazing because he really, I mean, there have been memoirists forever, but he really made that. Like, I don't know anyone else that travels around and reads their stories for a living. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it'd be great. It'd be pretty great. I, I think it'd just, I, I think it'd be, um, I was I was thinking uh, about him up there on stage, and I think that that seems like the most nerve wracking thing ever. I could not I could not like people say, oh, Santa must be scary. That that seems to me like reading stuff like he'd take out of his diary and stuff. I was like, gosh, I would not. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I feel a certain comfort in the written word, and I like yeah. that kind of interactivity that you get when it's spoken. So yeah. I really like it, and I've spent a lot of my time reading David Sedaris out loud to other people. So I really felt at home. But, <laughs> yeah. um, and he's got a great lisp as well. He's a very, very lovely list. man. Um, cool. Well, Done. you can obviously pick up Union Atlantic if you're interested at Unity Books. Yep, Auckland yeah. and Wellington. Auckland and Wellington. I really need to go to the Wellington store next time I'm down in Wellington. Yes. And be like, hello, I'm idea. from Auckland. I've been to your other branch. Weird handshake with no one. Um, I'm in a weird mood. Say goodbye to Lily Richards. <laughs> goodbye. Uh, what are we going to go to? Uh, right now, a bit of common oh. sky. Oh, nice. Welcome back. We're here with Lily Richards 
from the Lily Richards. This is just how I introduce The Lily Richards there. project. The Lily Richards are uh, from Free instructions to get better Unity way. Books. Hey, we're working with a professional here, Lily. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> don't groan. Um, uh, we're talking about books, and you've brought in a book, and you're, you haven't told me what it's about, and I'm excited to learn with the rest of these viewers what it is about. I'm distracted now because we were just talking about celebrity divorce. Well, we can talk, we can, we well, can have a chat about that. about that. I mean, what, what, what were you saying about Well, Tim reckons that it's a publicity stunt, that it sort of helps boost sales in terms I'm not, of why I'm not they leave it. it's a publicity it. stunt, but you're saying how does it come out, and I say... <laughs> <laughs> Not um, that the divorce is the publicity, no, yeah, no, but no. how it's leaked, like, because how the tabloids always know. Yeah, and I think it's the publicist realising that no, any good news, sorry, there's no such thing as bad news in celebrity world, Hollywood world. You know, any publicity is good for us. Yeah, thank you very much. And it's going to generate more interest and more sales, and, you know, but that's a cynical way to look at it. I'm it's not going to go see The Tourist just because Johnny Depp and Vanessa Paradis is just splitting up right I might go and cry. I might go cry. Get the tourist out on DVD and cry. <laughs> we should make up like a, a like a shrine. Yeah, to two TVs at once and like play yeah. one of her films and one of his and like films. And like just play her songs and his parodies albums if we can find them. Um, <laughs> that, that actually cut me deeper than Seal and Heidi. Well, but. Seal and Heidi is difficult because aren't they just perfect? Weird but perfect. I, I, and I just don't, because I don't understand a couple that can celebrate their anniversaries with so many dress-up parties. Yeah. <laughs> How that could divorce. <laughs> do you know what annoys me most is irreconcilable differences. I think that should be stricken from the list of options. I, because it's so opaque. Like, I, what does that mean? I give agree. us more. I agree. If you if you were going to be celebrities and you're going to divorce, you may as well, you have to give us a reason. You have to tell us why. You if you're going to get publicity out of it and we're going to go and watch your films and cry, yep. you have to tell us why you got divorced. <laughs> I, I totally agree with that. Ir irrecon irreconcilable, desirable. <laughs> what is wrong with you today? <laughs> there is something wrong with us. <laughs> there is actually something wrong with us today. To us. We're I'm in a cool weird. Like that. I mean, Tim, not you. Oh, clearly not me. Clearly not you. Anyway, um, off so that to topic of that. There's no tie in with this. <sighs> it's not about celebrity divorce. No. Oh, no. It is about America, though. Oh, that's good. It's it's a, that'll do. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Do you want to. There you go. Creepy cotton Adam background. Hazlitt. Gross. Ooh. Adam has like Union Atlantic. Union what a beautiful Atlantic. cover, I'm going to just say right it's pretty, now. Pretty, isn't it? I like that. Very evocative of America, you yeah. find. Yeah. Without quite being too literal. I like that. Yeah. Um, what it is, is it's a book about the, the housing collapse in 2000. Mm -hmm. Sounds riveting. Um, but, but it's kind of what, it's one of those stories that's kind of plays off. I thought, Tim, you might get excited about this. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of on the back of the Goon Squad and Freedom, this. Like modern American Thomas novel. H. Yeah, well, you wanted to talk about Thomas freedom, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a similar book. It's in that same genre mm -hmm. of, yeah, the modern American fable being about American lives, the kind of thing that gets put up for a Pulitzer. In fact, Adam Hazlitt's first book, which is a collection of short stories, was shortlisted for the Pulitzer, which is huge. Yeah. Um, so the Union Atlantic is a whole lot of different parts of the story woven together, maybe because he's a short story writer by yeah. nature, so that's kind of how he responds to things. Um, but it's about the collapse of the housing market through the perspective of a trader. So it's a really good looking kind of Patrick Bateman type character who seems to have no soul. Yeah. Um, and the kind of there's quite a bit about the uh, about about trading and about the financier stuff, mm -hmm. but which I didn't understand at all. Mm -hmm. But he's a good enough writer that that kind of just washes yeah. off your back. Um, yeah. But there's also other characters in it, and it kind of ties in the the financial crisis with this kind of um, social crisis in terms of this you know obsession with, with money. Mm -hmm. There's this wonderful old character and this old woman who um, lives next door to the financer who builds this giant mansion, empty, like for himself, with all of this money he's made. Yeah. And she finds it disgusting. And she sort of goes to war with him because he cut down all these trees to build this house. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a comment in there by someone saying that the house is quite impressive and she just launches into this tirade at them saying that, you know, it's not, it's not impressive, it's disgusting. And they go, well, it's just my opinion. And then she kind of attacks them for saying that that's the weak way we all get out of arguments I, now. Yeah. You know, like Where do you sort of, stand on that? Because that's a very interesting point. That was the first time I'd actually really thought about it. Because I thought I was being very liberal and open when I said it's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But it's actually a complete cop out. In a lot of ways, she's and the character in this book argues that if you do that, you're ignoring history in a sense, and you're yeah. ignoring that in the world there are actually some things that are disgusting, that are yeah. arguably, mm. demonstrably it's like, wrong. It's, like when, it's, it's almost like saying it's, yeah. this may sound racist, but well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I did it yesterday. I don't. Um, it might not be politically correct, but that's not a good enough reason to go yeah. and say something 
dickish. Yeah. No, like, that's not No, it's just the classic thing where in primary school people say no offence. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And that's just a terrible thing. Mm. Yeah, in because my, yeah. But if you think about it, we've, because we've kind of, we have a culture of that, we've become less adept at being able to describe why we think what we think. I um, had a really funny um, philosoph philosophy teacher when I was in high school, who sh she had a philosophy lecturer who, who would just, you know, philosophy, you see, it should be that, you know, every opinion is sort of equally kind of weighted and stuff. And you'd just be a lecturer who'd listen to people's ideas and be like, okay, but you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> and it's just, it just, just outright be like, no, you're wrong. And I just always thought it was interesting yeah. for someone to be so sure in their opinion. But I think that's kind of, isn't it, better than... It's, but it's such a fine line between being intelligent and smart, uh, intelligent, and then just being a dick. Like, you've <laughs> got to be able to back it up with reasoning. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't want to say, but that's just my opinion, as a cop-out. But if you're going to go to the other extreme, you've got to be able to back it up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, we were talking about podcasters before, and I was just interested to uh, find out if you... If you ever listened to that one, uh, This American Life episode about the subprime mortgage, mortgage crisis, sorry. No, I have skimmed over that one. It's re it, sure, I listened right, to that okay. when I was like 15, and I was so happy I listened to it because I kind of got what was happening. Like, it was, right. And it put it in such a, a great way from the people who got screwed over to the, to the finances and, and their weird obsession with like money and like uh, using these just... You know, making money off these people, using them as just numbers, not thinking of them as people. Yeah. And the real, as you see, like the Patrick Bateman kind of vibe, which is real mm -hmm. creepy. Um, but yeah, it's great, and they go through every kind of level of it, up to, all the way to the top. And it's, I'd highly recommend it, actually. Cool, all right. Up. So, archive that, listen to American Life. I'll listen Absolutely. to it tonight. Um, all right, let's go to a, a video, <laughs> and then we'll come back right after that. What are we going to go to? Uh, home by Edward Sharp and Z Magnetic oh, Zeros.